Hey gang, as promised, in this episode of Pool School, I'm gonna teach you how to clean your salt cell. So stand by. Alrighty, before we head back, there's a couple things you're gonna need to clean your salt cell. First and foremost, you're gonna need some muriatic acid. So that's what I carry in the back of my truck. They come in one gallon jugs and they're disposable. And again, you wanna make sure it's pool, um, muriatic acid for pools, okay? You're not gonna use a whole gallon, you're gonna use very little. The other thing I'm gonna make sure I have is this. This is a base. Most salt cells, they'll come with some kind of base because you're gonna need to set it on it and seal it. And you notice inside there's an O-ring. And that O-ring I wanna make sure is in there because that's gonna make sure that the, the acid water solution is not gonna leak out. And the base will screw, I mean the, the cell will screw into that base. Also, I always bring a pair of large channel locks like this because sometimes to get the to disconnect or unscrew the salt cell from the plumbing, uh, it gets a little tight. So you might want to use these to to loosen it up. But you don't want to crank use these to crank the thing tight because you can break the nut and you don't really need to crank it that tight. They just need to be snug when you put it back and we'll do that. We'll talk about that later. And then if you want to, you can also have a, you know, a plastic container like this to mix your solution in. Um, or I tend to just mix it right in the cell. You can also use a glass container. I would just say make sure that's enough. It holds enough liquid to actually fill the cell. So let's go back and let's get busy. A question people ask me a lot is how often should I clean my salt cell? Well, it really depends on the time of year. And most of these salt cells and salt systems now have a built-in like time clock, if you will. They kind of uh, track how many hours the equipment's running or how much water's going through it with the flow sensor and everything. And it will kind of alert you when you need to check the cell. But as a general rule of thumb, out here in Arizona, when a pool is being used a lot in the summertime, I usually suggest cleaning the cells. Well, I clean the cells of, of the pools that, of my pools that have salt systems. I'll clean those about every six weeks, sometimes as much as every four weeks. And then in the winter time, I'll do it maybe every eight weeks or maybe even every 10 weeks. Um, but one thing to keep in mind in the winter time, uh, it depends on each cell, but I think when the temperature drops below 46 degrees or 42 degrees Fahrenheit, the salt system no longer, or the salt cell no longer converts. It's just some kind of fail safe. I don't know why it does it, but it does. So in those times, um, if, if your temperatures drop below that, you're gonna need to supplement your chemistry of your pool with some liquid chlorine or some chlorine tablets. And you can refer back to my adding chlorine to your pool video. So again, as a general rule of the thumb, in the summertime during uh, a lot of the use times, you're probably gonna clean the cell every four to six weeks, and then the off season may be every eight to 10 weeks. Okay, so I am here at the control panel for this. Again, this is the Gold Line, Hayward Gold Line control panel and ProLogic. And again, I'm just using this as an example. I don't endorse these, I'm not suggesting these. But I want you to notice that it says the salt level is 3,100 parts per million right now. Now that's the sensor that's built into this system that's telling me that. Um, that's in the good range because if you look here, as far as the salt, right there on the bottom it says 2,700 to 3,400 parts per million. And so that is a good sign. Again, I'm right in the middle of it. So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I put this this system into service mode or into timeout mode. What that means, okay, so see that flashing light? That tells me it's in timeout mode. That means it will not turn on accidentally once I disconnect everything because I don't want water flying everywhere. Also, and this is super, super critical, okay? You wanna disconnect the power source to the cell. So that's what this is. See how it says cell? And in this case, this is the plug. You gotta be careful not to break those off or get it wet. And I'm gonna take that cord off. Now this cord is attached to the cell. Here's behind it. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of move it over here. And there is my cell. Now you notice there's some wires there. So I gotta be careful I don't hurt those wires when I loosen this. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew the top nut and 
the bottom nut right there on this cell to, to start the service process. So again, my system's not going to go on. I've disconnected it and I'm going to unscrew it. And this is where I kind of use a channel lock. So I'm going to just turn my video off right now and get this thing loosened up. Okay, I've actually used my channel locks to loosen this up and you'll notice that this will unscrew now. So I'm unscrewing that until it's completely unscrewed. All right, see that? That nut slides up and I know it's open. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom. And again, I use my channel locks to break it. So there we go, I've got it all unscrewed. Now, one thing to be very careful about when you take this apart is inside there, there's an O-ring in this side and on the bottom side. So when I take this off, I gotta make sure, if you look down there, you can see the O-ring. See that black circular thing? That's an O-ring and it sits in a groove. And there's also one up here. Hopefully you can see that, I'm just guessing. And that, you wanna make sure that those O-rings are seated in the groove. You also wanna make sure that they are not cracked or broken, or you're gonna to have to replace them. And you might wanna lube them. Now I lubed these the last time I did it so I don't really need to do it again. One thing also, when you put the cell back in, it's super important that you make sure that you don't crimp those things or pull them out of their groove. They can happen that way. Also, make absolutely certain that you remember the way the cell set in. So if you notice, this cell went this way, okay? So this was the way the cell was. So that's the bottom and that's the top, okay? And that was the way it set into the plumbing, all right? So make sure that you remember how it was in, because you don't want to put it in upside down, because that could, in some of these, uh, it could mess up the their ability to work because of the flow sensor. So now that I've got it disconnected, I'm gonna take this over by the pool and get it ready to be clean. One thing also, I don't use pool water when I add water to this. I use uh, water from a hose. So again, remember, this was the way my cell set in the plumbing. But I'm going to turn it over like this to actually set it in its base. I'm going to put it in the base and I'm going to screw the base down. So I'm going to let go of my phone to do that for just a second. If you look down inside of this, you can see there's a lot of gunk in there. This is, oh, well, that's interesting. That is a piece of something that got through the filter and through the pump and everything and came out into the into the cell. But if you look inside of there, there's a lot of gunk in there and that's just because we've had some storms. So I might help it out by kind of reaching down in there and clearing some of this out if I can. I might be able to, you know, just get it off of there so that way I'm not having to wait forever. Um, so you can see as I'm clearing that off. So I'm gonna take a second and do some of that before I get the acid solution in there. Okay, so acid solution how much okay so according to most manufacturers they recommend either a three to one or probably more like a four to one mixture solution of water to acid so that means four parts water to one part acid now you can measure that in a measuring thing i can i've done this for a while so i can kind of guess it based on the the capacity of the inside of the cell excuse me but a personal thing that I do, and again, I'm not recommending this, I'm just saying for myself and for most pool guys, we will not do a 4 to 1 or 3 to 1. We'll usually use a 50-50 half water, half muriatic solution to clean the cells. Biggest reason is because we don't have 30-40 minutes to sit at a pool and wait for the cell to clean. Um, but I probably would suggest for your sake, probably stay with the manufacturer's requirements because um, they may have a problem with it uh, wearing out the system or avoiding the warranty. Not that they can really uh, prove it, but if you wanna, there's, there's some speculation that it could reduce the life of the cell, although I've not found that to be true um, because when I first started doing pools, I used to do a four to one solution and the cells pooped out just as fast as when you do a 50-50 solution. So I'm gonna use a 50-50 solution, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my acid, and I'm gonna start by pouring water in there. So I'm gonna use a hose, I'm gonna use a hose spigot here to add my water first. Spigot, I'm again making sure that my, my connector 
that's my power source connector to the cell is not going to get wet and I'm going to take the water here and I'm just going to turn it on and put about 50% of the water filled up. So I'm going to fill this up with about 50% water. So that's about 50% water. Then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to open up my acid. All right. And again, most acid has child proof cap and it has this little tab in here too. I'll just tear that off. Okay. And then I'm going to add my acid. Now I want you to watch when I pour this in here, it's going to foam up like crazy. So I'm not going to pour it in super fast and pour a little bit in and I'm going to stop. Okay, if I keep pouring, what's going to happen is all that foam is going to boil over and it's going to get all over the concrete and all over the, the cell and it makes a mess. And you can, if, you do, if it does happen like that, just make sure you get some water and rinse it off. Okay, so once I look like it's safe and it's, the boiling has kind of gone down a little bit, I'm going to add a little more muriatic acid. Okay, and again, the foaming or the boiling, if you will, is telling me that it's eating away the minerals that are deposited on the fins inside the cell, okay? So again, I'm just watching this, making sure that I add only enough to, I'm gonna eventually cover those fins inside there with the solution. I might, just for laughs, put a little more water in it. So I'm gonna add a little more water here, okay? Just to kind of get those bubbles or the foam down. All right, and again, it's still foaming. And the cool thing about this is you can tell when your cell's clean. Do you know why? Yes, you guessed it. I knew you could. This, this thing will start fo stop foaming. Once the bubbles stop, you know that your cell is clean or as clean as it's going to get. Okay. And again, you notice there's some water. It's kind of oozing over. Now I'll make sure that I'm going to rinse that off in a moment, but I'm going to add a little more just to get it get what I need here and again I'll get some water here and kind of rinse it off a little bit okay and again it's gonna ooze over I try to tend to angle it so the acid solution doesn't seep into that little connector there but if it does don't freak out just get some water and rinse it off and you should be okay okay so I'm just rinsing some water off here all right and I'm gonna let that sit again I'm gonna add enough of the solution to fully cover the fins inside of there. And you saw those fins earlier, they were all caked up with stuff. So I wanna cover those fins. And I don't wanna overfill it, I just wanna cover those fins. Okay, so that's probably covering it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let this sit and do some other things at a pool. So there we go. I'm gonna let this sit while I do some other things at the pool until it's clean. So we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go back and take a look at this cell and see how clean it is now. One thing also, if you happen to spill any of the acid or acid solution on your, your decking or anywhere, just flush it out with water, rinse it with water, it'll come off. And if you get any of it splattered on yourself, don't panic, just rinse it off. But again, it, keep it away from your eyes, be very, very careful. Okay, so you notice that, I'm gonna flip this around. Okay, so you notice that that's still, there's a, there's still some stuff in there, and there's uh, the, the liquid's not covering it, so I'm gonna add a little more for the time being and get that thing filled up. There we go, now it's covering the fins. Can you see that? And you notice it's not bubbling quite as much. That is because it's already dissolved most of the minerals off of those fins, and it's just getting the rest of it. So I'm gonna shut this off, and we're gonna just let this finish its job. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes since I poured this solution into this, and you can see it's still bubbling a little bit, but for the sake of the video, I will remind you that you wanna make sure that you, to get it completely clean, just wait till all the bubbling stops. And you notice how the liquid is covering the fins, so you can't see the fins, so that means that they're fully getting clean, okay? But for the sake of this video, so I don't have to sit here for the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward, okay? So we're gonna assume that these fin, the cell is clean now, again, because the bubbling will stop and it'll just be still water. There's very little bubbling going on right now, so there's not a whole lot left in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the edge of the pool very carefully, and I'm just gonna dump this out into the pool, okay? Careful not to splash on myself, all right? And I'm gonna get it completely emptied out, all right? Notice all the cloudiness, that's all the minerals, and you can see a lot of that in the pool too. Okay, so you look down in that cell, and it's like, oh, 
that's a whole lot cleaner there, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew the base and I'm gonna have to like set my phone down to do this. So I'm gonna flip the, the, the video around, so hold on. Okay, so here's my cell and it's still in the base. And again, I've made sure that the end of my cord is not gonna touch the water and it's not gonna get stepped on because these things are expensive, especially this one, because it's built right into the thing and you'd have to replace the entire cell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over the water. Remember, I've emptied the cell out. I'm gonna come over the water and I'm gonna unscrew the base, making sure that that O-ring inside of it doesn't come out. And then I'm gonna rinse that off a little bit. And again, making sure the O-ring doesn't come out of there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the other side of it and you can just use uh, a plastic jug if you want to. And I'm gonna just take some cool water and I'm just gonna pour it in to the cell like this, all right? And that's just gonna help rinse out all the residual, all right? Now, I can see in here there's some more, there's still some fragments of debris that are in there. But if you look really closely through there, let me see if I put it up there, you can see through the fins, all right? You can see the other side of it. And that again, they're pretty darn clean, all right? Cool, so I'm done with my base. I'm gonna put that away, making sure that I don't lose that O-ring in there for future use. And I'm gonna take my cell, and I'm gonna bring it back to my pool equipment, and I'm gonna reinstall it. Okay, so I'm back here behind the equipment again, or where the equipment is. And again, here's my bottom pipe, and there's a little arrow here. I don't know if you can see it. There's an arrow that is pointing this way. And that tells me the water flow is going that way. So again, I know the direction my cell is supposed to be put in because I've made note of it. And also, this particular cell, the water flows through this fat end first and then through that. So the water's going this way, so that's the way I'm gonna put it in. So again, when I put it in, I've gotta make sure that those O-rings don't get snagged by the edge of this. So I kinda of set it in very nicely. I might have to lift a little bit on the, on the top of it or just kinda of wiggle, see how that slides in? And I'm just gonna gently slide it in. Okay, I kinda of have to wiggle it a little bit so that way I don't catch the O-ring and make a mess out of it, okay? And once I get it where it's lined up, I'm going to start tightening it down. Hang on a second. This is a little, there we go. Okay, so now that I've got it in, I can start snugging up. So I'm going to start with the bottom, and I'm just going to get it to thread on there, okay? So once I get it threaded on, I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to come to the top, and again, I'm very careful about this wire right here because this is a flow sensor that's tied to the salt system on this particular system. I don't want to break that wire, so I got to be very careful to move it out of the way, bring this down, and I'm going to kind of start threading that down on the top of that, okay? Now, I'm just going to slowly kind of snug them up. I don't want to crank them down yet, okay? And now they're hand tight, okay? So I've got it hand tight. Then what I'm going to do, just for my sake, is I'm going to grab my channel locks, these things here, make sure they're open enough, and gently and carefully, so I don't grab a piece of wire or anything, I'm just going to snug this down a little bit, just like that. Did you see that? Not even a quarter turn. Just a little bit, because these are huge channel locks, and they'll give you a lot of torque, so you don't want to go crazy. So I'm just going to gently snug that down right to about there, okay? Now, also remember, I have not yet plugged in the power cord, right? Because I don't want to do that till the very last thing. So now I've got it in. I know it's in the right way. I know the O-rings are in there. And I'm going to run this cord back to the unit and plug it in. So again, in this particular situation, it goes around like this. goes through all this wonderful stuff. Hang on a second. goes through there comes out here and see that little channel right there I'm gonna flip this camera around hold on see that little channel right there it comes up in that and there's my little cell plug make sure it lines up I don't force it just kind of get it in the right area and then I just push it in okay it's good to go now now remember I have this set on what we call timeout so that light is flashing and again, I'll go over timeout and things like that. What you just want to make sure is that your system has no chance of turning on. Okay, that's the key. All right, so now that it's all set up and I've got everything in, I'm going to fire up the system. So it's going to take a moment or so. So notice it fired up. Okay, and it's running. I'm going to look at my connection. 
and make sure that I don't have water gushing out or dripping out anywhere. Okay? And so, it looks like I'm in pretty good shape. No water seeping out at the bottom. No water seeping out in the top. Okay? And I'm just going to come back here and look at this, the control center, and it will kind of tell me if there's anything wrong. Okay? Right now the pool chlorinator is working at 100% because we're still in use time. It's 3,100 parts per million according to this. And I will teach you in another video how to actually test it more accurately. I don't really trust these cells and the way the, the, uh, the, way the systems work on measuring. I, I've not never really been able to trust them. So that's pretty much it. And again, once it's going, I know we're in good shape. And I can set my pool system up the way I need it and go back to regular run times. So there you go, folks. That's pretty much how you clean a salt cell. Um, most of them are all the same. Uh, some of them, one of the things I'd be concerned about, some of them have the actual control panel built right into the cell. Uh, I'm not a big fan of those, obviously, because the cell goes bad, you gotta replace everything, including the control panel, uh, and that can be pretty pricey. But I also don't like them because if you do get some spillover with your acid water solution, that can mess up the control panel. Um, hopefully they're sealed, but they, uh, it's, it's just a poor design. Anyway, quick summarization, remember, you want to make sure that there's no way that the power or electricity can go to the cell when you're cleaning it. So disconnect the power cord. Be very careful not to get it wet or to step on it or break it in any way, shape, or form. Remember to pay attention to the way your cell is set in to the plumbing. Okay, so remember which is top and which is bottom. Because if you get it in upside down, some cells won't work either direction. They are specifically designed to work one direction like the one I used in this video as well. Remember, I just used it for an example. But again, you're going to unscrew those big nuts. Once you've got the system, make sure the system won't, won't turn on accidentally, right? Unscrew the nuts. If you need to break them free with some big channel locks, that's fine. Just be careful you don't grab any wires and crush those as well. As you unscrew it, make sure that when you pull it out, you make sure that those O-rings that are in the top and bottom of the plumbing side, not the cell. The cell's just flat on the top and bottom with the threaded sections. You wanna make sure that those O-rings are lubricated and that they're not cracked or broken. If they are, you wanna, you're gonna to wanna to replace them. And you can get those at a pool supply store pretty much anywhere. Or uh, if you need to lubricate them, get a good pool lubricant uh, like Magic Lube and you can use that and just coat the O-rings. That'll prevent them from drying out, also prevent leakage, okay? Um, then you take your base. Remember, all cells usually come with a base. If you don't have one, you're gonna wanna try and get one. You probably order it, find out the, the manufacturer and the model of your cell. You could probably find it online. So please don't ask me any questions about that. Do an online search after you know the model and make of your salt system and cell, and you'll find a base stand for it. Once you get the bait, once you get the cell out, move it to a place where you're going to use your water. I tend to use hose. You can premix your solution, or you cannot. Remember. Um, Follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Again, I talked about the four to one or three to one. Sometimes most of us pool guys, we use a 50-50 or, or a one to one. But again, that can be, um, we do it to expedite the process of cleaning the fins. Um, if you have the time, like I said, you know, even with the solution, I did like a three to one in today's episode, and that still took about 25 to 30 minutes for it to clean the fins. Um, again, this particular pool has a super, super high dissolved solid level, as well as minerals, so the fins get gummed up really fast. Remember to clean your cell probably every four to six weeks during the peak seasons, and then in the off season, probably every eight to 12 weeks, or eight to 10 weeks. And uh, again, when the temperature dips into the low 40s, your cell is probably not going to convert the salt water into purifiers. So you're gonna to need to supplement some chlorine uh, in your pool to, to make up for it during the cold months. Uh, I think that's about it. Remember when you put it all back into place, I always rinse it off. Be careful with your acid solution. Don't get it in your eyes. Um, once, you know, when you pour your solution in, you're gonna, it's gonna foam, make sure it doesn't gush over, but pour it in gradually until it covers the fins. And as long as it's bubbling, it means it's still cleaning. Once the bubbling stops, you'll know that the fins are clean. At that point, you can take the cell, empty the solution into your pool, because it's acid and, and salt minerals, and that just dissolves back into your pool. And then rinse it out, make sure you take your base off, and I did it with my base, and make sure when you take your base off, you don't lose the O-ring that sits in the base because that will prevent your uh, base from working and sealing right. So keep that O-ring intact. And then you're gonna mount your cell back in 
careful to, again, make sure that those O-rings don't get caught by the lips of the cell. Make sure it goes in there so don't force it. Sometimes I even lift up on the pipe of the plumbing just to give it a little room and move it in so there should be a little play in there. And then once I got it in and seated, I snug it down on both ends. And then I take my channel locks, and this is me personally, just give it a very small turn, not a full turn, just enough to just snug it. And again, you're gonna have a lot of power with long, big channel locks, so don't do too much. Okay, but I just snug it down a little bit, fire it up, check the system, make sure there's no leaks. Oh, and remember, plug in, plug back in the power cord, right, for the cell, so that way it's getting power and fire it up and check it for leaks and you're good to go. So that is today's episode, the second episode in the series on salt systems. I hope it helped. Um, remember, uh, I gave you a lot of information so feel free to go through this lesson again as many times as you need to. Again, if you have any questions, you can always post them in the comment section below this video. Or if you want to email me, you can email me directly with at Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. It should show up right across the bottom here. Kenny, poolschool at gmail.com. I thank you again for watching. Hey, we're really close to hitting a thousand subscribers, so I would really appreciate it if you could share this with your friends and get them to subscribe. We're going to try and hit a thousand subscribers before the end of 2018. That would be awesome. Um, but again, the season's winding down, but you still have a pool. So always, always, always be careful, have fun, and always, always, always watch your kids around water. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.